In this video, we will be learning about histograms. Hello, welcome to Moo Moo Math, where we upload a new math video every day. In this video, I'd like to talk about the difference between a histogram and a bar graph. A histogram and a bar graph both are ways to graph data. Both have an X and a Y axis, and both use a bar to display the data. With a histogram, the categories are numerical. For example, notice in this histogram, the x-axis is the age of the people in the room. The ages are grouped in a numerical range. In this next example, the histogram is graphing the score on a test and the number of people who scored in each range. Also, the bars touch with a histogram. A bar graph uses categories such as the types of movies, color of eyes, and the bars do not touch. For example, with this bar graph, the categories are grade level and the number of students in each grade level. Notice that the bars do not touch. In another example, the categories are types of videos and the number of videos in each type. Again, notice the bars don't touch. In summary, histogram have ba bars that touch and use quantities. Bar graphs have bars that don't touch and use categorical data. Thanks for watching. Look at each graph. Decide what type of data is being graphed. Is it categorical data? or is it numerical data? If it's categorical data, it is a bar graph. If it is numerical data, then it is a histogram. Our first graph is categorical data, and it is a bar graph. Our second graph lists numerical data, and you can see at the bottom they're all numbers, and it is a histogram. The next graph, average SAT scores, is numerical data, and it is a histogram. What kind of pet do you own would be categorical data, and it is a bar graph. Different types of ice cream flavors is a bar graph because it is categorical data. This is categorical data, and it is a bar graph. This graph shows test scores, numerical data, it is a histogram. This graph shows types of fruit, so it is a categorical data, and it is a bar graph. In our government, we have three branches of government. We have the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. In the House of Representatives, the number of people in each is based on population of state. So if you have more people in your state, you have more representatives in the House of Representatives. However, in the Senate, every state gets two senators per state. And this is something that you learned and hopefully you remember from fifth grade. Qualifications to be a senator. You have to be at least 30 years old. You have to be a US citizen for at least nine years at the time of the election to the Senate. 
and you have to be a resident of the state one is elected to represent in the Senate. Carpetbagger. In the world of politics, there are some, a person could sometimes be called a carpetbagger. So what is a carpetbagger? It's a noun, a non-resident who meddles in local politics. Used in a sentence, we're going to suss out all these dirty carpetbaggers and run them out of town on a rail. Because we have residency laws often in order to run for election, people will move into an area if they want to have a political office. So if I live in an area and somebody has been the representative there for a very long time and I don't think that I can beat them in an election, I might move to another area just to win an election. And they're called carpetbaggers. They're people who move to other locations, not necessarily because they wanna live there, but because they wanna hold a political office and they feel as though they'll have a better chance at winning in that area. And so the local people tend to get upset because of the things they have that, you know, they don't really feel that they're being represented by a native person that really cares about their issues. So this is called a carpetbagger. So what is a carpet bag? Well, a carpet bag might look like this. With a rapid expansion of railroads in the 1840s and 1850s, ordinary people were traveling in large numbers and there was a need for cheap luggage. So thousands of carpet bags were manufactured. They were made by saddle makers in many towns and cities and were many sizes and shapes. They were called carpet bags because the makers would buy old carpets, because carpets are durable, and construct the bags from the pieces of carpets that were not completely worn out. This is how carpet bags could be manufactured cheaply. They were sold in dry goods stores for a dollar to two dollars. I'm afraid the nursery isn't very tidy. It is rather like a bear pit, isn't it? That's a funny sort of bag. Carpet. You mean to carry carpets in? No, nope, made of. This is your room, and there's a lovely view of the park. Hmm. Well, it's not exactly Buckingham Palace. Still, it's clean. Yes, I think it will be quite suitable. Just needs a touch here and there. Well, first things first. I always say the place to hang a hat is on a hat stand. Now, our Pennsylvania senators are Robert Casey and Pat Toomey. Display numerical data in plots on a number line, including dot plots, histograms, and box plots. The frequency table below shows the ages of U.S. senators. Create a histogram of the data. So here we have all of the ages, all the age ranges and the number of senators in each range. Pause the video, get a sheet of paper, follow along and make the histogram. Pause as needed. The first thing we're going to do is draw the Y and X axis. For the X axis, I started with a squiggly line. This is a broken number line. Our ages are going to start at 30 and not zero. So this is why we have a broken number line for our X axis. Every graph has to have a title. Our title is U.S. Senator Ages. For the X-axis, 
we are going to record the age in years. Always include the unit. On the y-axis, we're going to record the number of senators. Like I said, the interval for the x-axis is not going to start at 0, it's going to start at 30. So we're going to write 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. For our y-axis, our highest number is 35 and our lowest number is 1, so we're going to count by fives. Now we're ready to graph. Now it's time to create our graph. We have one senator that is between the ages of 30 and 40. We have 12 senators that are between the ages of 40 and 50. We have 30 senators that are between the ages of 50 and 60. We have 35 senators that are between the ages of 60 and 70. We have 21 senators that are between the ages of 70 and 80. And we have one senator that is between the ages of 80 and 90. How many senators' ages were surveyed? We can count all of the senators using our table, but we also know that there are two senators per state. So how many states are there? 50. And 50 times 2 is 100. So we have 100 senators in the U.S. Senate. I like to write the number on top of the bars, especially when I have to estimate. So here I see a 5. So, you know, what was that again? I do like to write the numbers on the top. When I know I'm going to be answering questions about the graph, I like to write the numbers on top. That is not official. That's just when you're making or when you're answering questions like on a quiz or a worksheet. All right. How many senators were younger than 50? Well, I can look at my graph and draw a line here. Sometimes my pen does that. I can draw a line right here for 50. And I can see that I have 12 plus 1. So 13 senators are younger than 50. How many senators were older than 50? Well, that would go this way. And I can add all of these up. And that would be 87. Now, what I did here, you can see that in your textbook, it will say 30 to 39 and 40 to 49. Because you're in sixth grade and they're introducing histograms, they're giving it, they're making it sim more simple for you. They're making it 30 to 39, 40 to 49, and so on. A true histogram only has one number. It doesn't really have ranges. But you'll see in your workbook that they're helping you out, and they'll say here 30 to 39, and then they'll say 40 to 49, and 50 to 59, and 60 to 69. They're helping you out, okay? This is actually an official histogram, but it will actually be easier when you see it in your, in your textbook. What question can we ask about this graph? 
think about a question. I might ask, how many people are in the age range of 60 to 70 years? I could ask that, and that would be the purple bar. And that would be 35, uh, 60 to 70, would be 35 people. Now, we see that most of the people are between the ages of 40 and 80. But more specifically, they're between the ages of 50 and 70. And this is a thing, this is an important thing to think about. Like, why don't we, why is there less people between 30 and 40? And why are there less people between 40 and 50? Then it seems like there's just more people in this range. And why might that be? I want you to think about how old your parents are and what they're doing right now. Between the ages of 30 and 50, a lot of people are raising children. And when you are in the Senate, you actually have to go down to Washington, D.C. and do your job. So this would mean relocating your family or at least being away from your family. So people between the ages of 30 and 50 may not want to do that. Additionally, people between the ages of 30 and 40 and are establishing themselves in their careers. So when you vote for people, you typically vote for people that have experience. So between the ages of 30 and 40, that's when people are getting their experience. And then if they, maybe they're serving as a, you know, a supervisor in their township or volunteering, just getting, you know, doing public service. Now, at 50, kids start to go to college, or at least they move out of the house and they get a job. So now 50-year-olds have experience, and now their children are adults, and so now they can move on and do some things. So this is why we see a spike in this age range. Okay. Then we start to see a decrease because obviously people are getting older. Okay, and they're retiring, and maybe they have some health issues that they need to deal with. Grandchildren, maybe they want to be a better part of their, you know, be a significant part of their lives. The reason I'm having this discussion with you is that these are conversations that you have with histograms. What I don't know, which is our next question, what questions can we not ask about this graph? Well, Think about that. One thing is, I don't know anyone's specific age. I also don't know if they're a female or a male. I don't know what state they're from. I know very, very little. This graph is just used to give a general picture about whatever the author of the graph is trying to convey to the reader. So sometimes this graph is a disadvantage if you're looking for specific information. Now, I mentioned to you earlier, this is a histogram. Now this is a bar graph type histogram. Now in your book, the, you wouldn't have gaps. So in your book, it will look like this but it just won't have gaps, okay? But these are both, if, if I were to get rid of these gaps, these both would be histograms, all right? So in your book, it's gonna look like this one, all right? Because they're helping you out by adding the end number here. Great job working with histograms. Have an all-American awesome day. And this is Mrs. Smith. Signing off.